Point where we're in, you know, six years old, shouldn't be having any men in your bedroom, especially in today's day. And uh, this man didn't speak to me, didn't talk, he just kind of stood there and looked at me. And um, before I missed it, scared me. I spoke to my grandmother, I said, you know, I've seen this man in my bedroom. Their exact words and their exact actions. Oh, don't worry, he's just a man called Thomas. <laughs> okay? Well, I don't know what it was like for you guys growing up, but for me, when my grandmother spoke, it may as well have been gospel. Because she said it was okay not to worry about it, I didn't. Um, haven't seen this man to this day. It wasn't until I went to secondary school, comprehensive, and um, so we did research and history on the areas that we grew up in. Found out that the house that I lived in was Victorian, and during the 1920s there was a man whose surname was Thomas, but passed away whilst living at the house. Didn't die in the house, but he passed away whilst living there. So the only thing that made sense to me was I'm in his house too, be a little bit respectful. Probably being six, it's probably a little bit noisy, a little bit monstrous. What really started off for me, guys, was dreams. How many of you guys do things in dreams and have strange dreams? How many of you guys... Oh, cool. <laughs> do you all need Red Bull or something? What's going on? <laughs> How many of you guys have dreams and you try and understand your dreams? How many of you guys have dreams and you spend hours trying to analyze it, try and interpret it? Okay. I'm going to ask one question. Why would you want to spend three hours trying to make sense of a five-minute dream? I'm going to answer it, okay? It gets overcomplicated. A lot of the dreams that I would have would be quite strange. And at the age of six, I should be dreaming about Transformers, cartoons, and probably what breakfast cereal I'm going to have in the morning. Um, but I kept having very prophetic and, um, how can I say this, pre-cognitive dreams. I had a dream that my aunt was going to run off with another man. She's married with four kids, I'm six. Um, two months later, it actually happened. Exactly as I'd seen it, with the man that I'd already seen. Deja vu happened, obviously, in these back dreams. 9-11, I saw that two years before it happened. Didn't show me the dates, didn't give me the flight numbers, American Airlines Flight 74B or, or whatever it was, they showed me the image. Who am I going to tell? If I'd rang up President Bush, who was in at the time, can you do me a favor and keep an eye for some of your planes? I don't know where or when. If something bad's going to happen, they probably would have locked me up in Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> it's not always easy talking about these sorts of things, um, and it's really not. One that was quite personal to me, I would keep go off to New Orleans to work. Supposed to be working for a week and then have two weeks holidays. And everything booked, the flight, the hotel, the car hire, the whole trip. One month before, I kept having this dream that I was going to drain. Couldn't shake it, I'd been used to working <coughs> with my dreams and working with messages. I cancelled it. I lost three thousand pounds. Because it was so close to the time of departure. Quite quite gutting to be quite honest. Um, but when I was supposed to have been there, I heard the to there. The hotel where I was due to stay and was right on the beachfront. Overlooking the, overlooking the coast was one of the first hotels that had been destroyed and smashed apart by Hurricane Katrina. So if I had it gone, I probably wouldn't be here now to tell the tale. That makes sense to you. Um, not all my dreams are pre-cognitive, which is very lucky for Angina Jolie. I'm sure she wouldn't want my dreams to be with my voice. <laughs> Feel the burn. Um, I grew up, where do you guys think I'm from? Wales. Well, you know the answer. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm from South Wales. There's not a lot for young kids to be doing. Um, I captained County Level at Rugby, I boxed. When most kids would be playing, I'd be spending a lot of time with my grandmother learning how to read and connect with the spirit. Uh, reading tea leaves, reading uh, palms, and doing different, different things spiritually. Um, so I don't think that I really had a normal childhood. Do you agree? Do you think it was a normal childhood or not? I sound quite childhood actually, don't I? <laughs> but I'm always done good numbers, I need to be ready. <laughs> um, so that was my childhood. When I grew up, I went off to America. I spent two years living in the States in the Indiana and Ohio with the Cherokee and Greek Native Americans. 
learned a lot from them, their ways and methods, some of which I still use to this day, to connect, some of which I don't. Purely because they don't particularly carry well back, back in Britain. Um, if you had an animal that was knocked over on the side of the road, they would take that animal home, dry it up, and then use certain parts, be it the wings, the claws, the beaks, etc. Now, if I did that back in England, I'm quite sure I'd have the RSPCA knock on my door every day. So, one thing I want to tell you guys, take what suits. They're all capable of working with stuff. Who believes that? Who thinks they're mediumistic and sensitive? Ooh, big words, big words. You enthusiastic bunch. <laughs> Am I going to bribe you guys to interact me with chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The guys are saying yes. No, oh, let me know. Speak it up, that's good. <coughs> okay. You're all capable. There's nothing special about me or any other medium that you guys are going to see. I don't run around with pants on inside out, jumping down the banister. You see if they get thoughts out of your mind. <laughs> Only on Tuesday. You're all capable. I'm mean, what they call a clairvoyant. How many of you guys know what a clairvoyant is? You want me to speak? Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, it's not a long time question here. Yeah. Can you just put your hand up and go, uh, yeah. um, uh, sometimes? Uh, can, yeah, clairvoyant is a, a person who can interact and see and speak with okay. spirits. Clairvoyant means uh, to see. Uh, normally the clairs involve mental mediumship. Does that make sense? So when they say a clear body, they'll normally see images inside your mind. I see spirit the same as I see you guys, with both physical eyes and in the mind. And it's quite freaky when you're in a queue in Tesco's, picking up whatever you're picking up, and you've got a woman walking around, and you'll see her dead mother stood beside her. <laughs> Can you ask her to check her breasts? There's something going on with her breasts. <laughs> Do you think they'd appreciate me doing that? <laughs> How many of you guys would like me to come up to you <laughs> and do that? It's not always easy, is it? The one thing I want to teach you guys and help you guys understand, for every good medium, you'll have 100 which are. Um, let's go back to talking about me and where I've come from. After America, I went off to Australia. Of course, what sort of people do you guys think I work with in Australia? Please don't say Australians. <laughs> the oh, look at this. We're waking up then. Almost time to go home when I'm waking up. <laughs> okay. Um, Aboriginal, very similar to Native Americans in their beliefs, sleep and dream time being important, but they're very spiritual people. Learned a lot from them. Japan. What sort of people do you find in Japan? Ah! Monks. <laughs> Let's go with Japanese, yeah? Let's keep it simple. Okay, uh, Japan, Thailand, I've worked all over the world. I've been connecting with spirits for well over 25 years. That's older than some of you lot, isn't it? I feel, I feel quite embarrassed by that. I've been connecting with spirits for 25 years, worked as a medium for the last 15. Of them 15 years, I kept it very private for about 10 or 11 years. You wouldn't have known that I worked with spirit. Do I look like your typical medium? How do you all expect me to look? Tea towels around my head with a bang the cons and a crystal ball? <laughs> We're people guys, spirits of people. Um, I had a regular nine to five. What do you guys think that was? What do you think my normal job used to be? Call center. Call center, okay. Factory. Factory, okay. Thanks for your confidence in me. <laughs> Security. Security, okay. IT. Male escort. Male escort. <laughs> the, the, the weird thing about that is that's not the first time that someone said that. I've been called a stripper. Hold down, sir. Alright, can you stop it now? I was just the idiot. Okay, um, my regular job is speaking IT manager. Very boring, very uninteresting job. Just look after networks and servers and a call center. Ah, more than you think, see. And I got the two right there. There you go. There you go. So, I used to do that nine to five. In the evenings, I do 
private meetings. Uh, I have customers and I'm working all over the world. America, Australia, Canada, uh, New Zealand, Japan, from one end of the to the other. Well, globe, not country. Let's go that one, right? Um, I do that in the evenings, I used to do that all the time. I also run development circles and workshops. Like I said, guys, you all take the work in the spirit. Spirits all around you, families all around you. How many people believe that? That their family and their loved ones close to them? How many of you guys don't think so? That's fine, then. that's fine. I'm not here, guys, to change your mind. Yeah? If you're a believer, if you're a skeptic, that's great. And if you guys sat on the fence, that's fine. Do me a favour and watch out the splinters, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid bonus card, yeah? I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just dawn, there's a lot of light in there, yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. What I want to try and help you guys do and understand is that you don't need a medium. How do you guys fancy spending two minutes a day for a week, 15 minutes of your time? Connect with your loved ones. Who'd be up for that? Who wouldn't? That's fine, isn't it? Don't panic. Okay? Very simple, very easy way to do it. Real, real easy, guys. They're around you all the time. Oh, you're happy, lot. <laughs> okay. When you guys go to bed at night, what do you guys normally do last day? <laughs> Be angry. <laughs> I don't need to hear or see them images, thank you very much. <laughs> None of you guys brush your teeth before you go to bed? <laughs> None of you guys say a prayer before you go to bed? <laughs> okay. All it takes guys is two minutes. Two minutes of your time and you will be connecting close with your loved ones. All you have to do. Real easy. When you go to bed, how many of you guys have trouble sleeping? How many of you don't? <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Catherine! <laughs> exactly! <laughs> okay. When you go to bed, guys, spend two minutes thinking about your loved one. Thinking about your family, your friend that you want to connect with. Can you do that? Two minutes. Yeah? For the first night, what I want you guys to do is think directly about that person. Yeah? Everything about the way that person looked, even the way that, that person changed over the time. Think about that person for two minutes. The second night, I want you to think of sounds that you'll associate with that person for two minutes. Really easy, be it songs, music, the dog barking, the, the budgie keeping on, whatever it's going to be, yeah? Think of sounds. Third night, I want you to think of smell. That may be granny's cooking, that may be um, tobacco, absolutely, whatever it is. I want you to think of smell. The more that you think about these people, and do that in the space of seven days, the different senses, work with it, yeah, you will build up better images in your mind. Does that make sense to you? You'll remember more about how the rooms work. You'll start to remember the bad carpet that he used to have. <coughs> you remember more and more details. Now what have you got to lose with that? Then two minutes of your time, you're going to go to sleep better. You're going to be thinking about positive people, number one, aren't you? Yes, no? Yeah. You're not going to think about anybody nasty here, really. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to make you guys sleep better. So put in that full bubble out there. You all remember Dandy? Bino? Oh, you said girls going to watch that? Yeah. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> okay. Think of the thought bubbles, yeah? Put that thought out there that you want to speak to that person. Do you guys think the spirit's going to come in front of you and go, Boo! You know I am, you found me. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys think that your grandmother's going to do that? Your nan, your uncle, you're not going to. Yeah, look for subtle sign, okay? Smells, emotions, and feelings will be the easiest ones. You'll feel a warmth around you. 
to feel a little bit of comfort around you. That's all it takes, guys. 14 minutes. Really easy to connect. How many of you guys have children? Some of you guys don't look very happy about it. Some of you have children from the CSA. Okay. Can you guys remember when your children were babies? Yeah? Some of you try not to. Oh, that is great. They were so cute, they can walk or talk when I meet Brian. When your children were babies, you could tell the difference between their cries and what they wanted. Where means I'm hungry. Why means I've had an accident. <laughs> not me personally, don't panic. You <laughs> stop looking around and they make me feel quite uncomfortable. Okay? You have that link with your children. That tells me that you are capable of connecting with anybody. Do you guys think that we can control who comes through? Some people believe that they control who comes through. I'll be quite honest. I'm very blunt with what I do, in case you guys haven't noticed. Um, I'll tell you as it is. If that was the case, I'd be speaking to Elvis today, Princess Diana tomorrow. It doesn't work like that, guys. Okay? We can't control them. <coughs> but just by thinking about that person, you're putting that thought out there that you want to connect with that particular person. Remember you with that? I'd like to see how you guys get on with that and tell me your reactions to it. So many of you guys have seen me work before and got me on Facebook and whatnot. Let us know how you get on with that. For 15 minutes at a time. It'll help you guys see that number one. How many of you guys have been on paranormal investigations? How many of you haven't? Why not? Just pray. It's your own guys. Um, I've been working with the media for, for all this time. I've lived down with Ireland investigations. All over the UK, America. Um, and I've worked with all sorts of people involved in this industry. Some are good. And I'm going to be quite straight with you guys. Some are absolutely terrible. Please don't ask me for the gossip whilst I'm up here. If you ask me afterwards, I'm sure I can tell you exactly what I think about certain people. I'm very straight with it, okay? Um, I know what I'm doing, I've worked with all of these people. And recently, six months ago, one of the companies I used to work for, this company Paranormal, I've always been a hired media. So it's not just companies, I've worked with such a variety of groups and um, teams and companies. Um, but we took over companies. We thought about it long and hard. What can we do differently? the way the investigations are at the moment. Because it's all same and same, isn't it? Have you guys gone on, how many of you guys are part of your own team? How many of you guys have gone on public events? Okay. It's okay, not taking notes, I'm making numbers. I don't need to back uh, the last four digits of your car, don't worry. Okay. Um, Compass is very different in the fact that we give you both sides of the pipe. You are armed with more equipment than you can shake a stick at. Five, uh, five toolboxes, three foot toolboxes full of equipment. Gadgets and gizmos out the eyeballs. I could sit here for hours and bore you guys to tears and tell you what we got. But we've also got the old fashioned techniques too. The Ouija boards, the seances. You've got both sides of the pipe. We don't tell you guys that it has to be spiritual, that it has to be scientific. You guys run that however you want to. And you guys then make your own mind up. So we thought, how can we really make the campus stand out for everybody else? If you could go anywhere in the world, guys, where would you like to go and investigate? Ooh, we got some cars rolling around now. New drums then. Ancient Ramen? Yep. I live 30 minutes away. Or Bordy Rectory? Bordy Rectory would be good, it's been burnt down. <laughs> I, know, I know it's been burnt down, but apparently there's still visitation, there's still presences on the ground. Uh, I agree, purely out of the historical side, I'd love to be in there. But the Ancient Ram is definitely one that would be. Um, I'll be quite honest with you, the Ancient Ramen is a strange place. But the scariest part of the Ancient Ramen is John that owns it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I understand, yeah. Um, What's your mansion? 
Wood trust and mansion. Um, I'm not far. We're facing the forest team. Wood trust and mansion. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I find that quite, quite a strange place because people didn't live there. Nobody actually lived in Woodchester Mansion. You had to work between half the job. Fantastic looking place. When you pull up in the middle of nowhere near Nimbus Field, and you're coming down this hill and you see this big, huge, it looks like something from the Hammer House of The activity doesn't justify it. My, my personal opinion. I don't feel that you get enough there. So you guys are all picking places that we do regularly. Get Bravels. Get Bravels. Get Bravels, that's the spend road. Very active place. If you ask to speak to Jan later, she can show you a picture. She's called a full body apparition with a regular hand. When there was nobody upstairs, he was outside the building. There's a man in the window. It's not weird. But that time's not out of this. It's incredible. Worldwide, guys. If you can go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Arbitrage. Arbitrage, they've stopped doing it. Oh, yeah, about too far. I'm not familiar with that one. What's there? Well, there? Well, you want to go in here, sir? <laughs> you could be going to work for that one. Yeah. Anybody got anywhere else you'd like to go to? Waverly Hills in Kentucky. Yep. Valley of the Kings, Egypt. Egypt would be good. My problem with the likes of Egypt, what we tend to find is the older the energy, the less energy they actually have. Does that make sense? So with time, they fade. You'll pick up on more recent things before you'll pick up on the older it gets, the harder it is to connect with. Because it just fades, and it really does. So I don't know, I, I'd like to for the historical side of it. I love the history side of it. Um, and some of these places, they would love to go into just purely for that, you know, for the historical feeling. Are you talking about the pyramids? Or yeah, yeah, the Valley of the Kings. Yeah. Um, you look at energy that's there. That's old energy. That's two thousand years old, three thousand years but old. But it's got great healing properties and all. You know, it's still very active. King Tut's. I'm oh, sure it's very that's active. been proven. Okay. Yeah. No, just. No, no, no. No, when no, you're no, saying it's an old energy, it might be old, but it's very much still, alive. Oh, you know, well, absolutely. So, I completely agree with it. I yeah, completely understand so, what, what you're saying. I'd just say, generally speaking, uh -huh. normally the older it gets. How many of you guys got on investigations and picked up on something from a thousand years ago? You see what I'm saying? Two hundred years, like Victorian time, yeah. tends to be quite strong energy. Would it be because it's still to the way being worshipped to keep going? Would that be like... Could still well be so active and strong? Like that, definitely something worth looking into. It's an old energy, but... So it would have been a powerful yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah, would it be because it's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wonder would it be because it's still, you know, it could be worshipped to a degree. No, 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 it's not, no, it's the energy is in pyramids, like it's in it. You know, it's still an energy and it's there, old, yep. but good. No, yeah. completely with it, like I say, completely with you. Uh -huh. Completely understand what you're saying. I do think it's because, like you said, the um, concentration of that energy to start with, even 3,000 years ago, would have been so much more powerful than Mrs. Smith that lived down the road. Does that make yeah. sense to you? Yeah. It's a completely yeah. different sort of powerful energy anyway. How many of you guys can see energy? How many of you guys can feel energy? Feelings and emotions, guys, will come to you first. How many of you guys go into the place going, oh, bad feeling about this place? Sometimes. Yeah? What I'd suggest, guys, is you stop going into these dodgy pubs, okay? <laughs> okay, um, hearing can be quite hard. Visual things tend to be harder than anything else. That's what, it, it takes that much more energy for spirit to physically manifest itself. Especially with a physical image rather than a mental image. Does that make sense to you? Okay, has anybody got any questions at all? I did a ghost watch last night up in Crumlin Road deal. Yep. We did it from half eight to half nine, and there was two areas. We, everyone liked to hear stuff. First of all, we heard the door slamming, okay. and then whenever we were taking the photographs down in the, one of the rooms, we heard these like, mo moanings. We actually ended up having to do it two or three times to make sure that it wasn't one of the group, and it wasn't. It's the same time when she said, is there anybody here? Why she was saying it, we heard this little noise. We were all like, oh. 
all spirits, guys, are people. You know, we're dealing with spirits, we're talking people. Do you guys know the difference between a spirit and a ghost? Who would like to give me the input on that? The difference between a spirit and a ghost? Ghost is residual energy, and uh, spirit is the living, okay. intelligent energy. But the best thing to put it, guys, and I'm, you are spot on, I'm not going to you are, mate, you're spot on. The ghost is a replay. You all remember the Scots video thing about the ghost, the skeleton? Mm -hmm. Was it just me? No. We record not seen away. You guys remember videotape? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Betamax? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I wasn't around at Betamax then, it's bad, yeah. dude. But then it's the same thing, it's just replay. It's a replay. It's non interactive. The spirit will be the essence and or energy of the person that will interact. And when I say interactive, I don't mean sky red buttons, that's all I mean. <laughs> okay? Interactive, non interactive. So why do people call it ghost hunting? One of my personal pet hates. You're looking for a ghost, so you're looking for a replay. What are you going to do when you call it hanging up next to the deer's head? <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's a, it's a silly word. I think a lot of the problem within the paranormal is a lot of egos. Do you all know what I mean by that? Yeah. Oh, look at, look at this. We have paranormal unity for three seconds, egos. It's not about egos, guys. It's really not, okay? Um, do it your way. Enjoy it your way. All I'm asking you guys to do be it investigations, be it mediumship, be open-minded. I'm not here to change your mind, just be open-minded and open to trying different ideas. If you're doing the same thing all the time, are you likely to get anything? Think of yourself, think of spirit, the spirit that you're trying to connect with, think of it from your point of view, yeah? Let's do one that. Is there anybody there give us a sign? Can you come forward and touch me? If I'm being asked that every Friday night, every Saturday night, <laughs> how do you think the spirit's going to feel? The people, they're going to be telling you, go and do it, I'm not doing that. Yeah? You've got to look at things differently. You've got to stand there. Try different approaches. Don't just stick with one piece of equipment. Try different things. Experiments that you guys should be trying. Something that we've come across, and I'll give you one of our little clears and one thing that we've tried, and it works. Reenactment. Recreate the environment that they were in or around. Yeah? Exactly. Exactly that. If you're in a prison, put some team members in the cells, treat them as prisoners. It works. Uh, if you're in a courtroom, have one of the team members be judge and have the other one be jury and execution. It works, guys. Try different approaches. Is that because you're creating that energy, that same sort of energy and that sort of feeling it's, from the time it originally happened? It's the recognizability. It's something that, hey, hang on. Yeah. Fast familiar. I know what's going on here. But then the people of the team would sort of be on the same energy level, sort of Definitely. like, you know, if you're unhappy. That creates the, the illusion then it's of the original. It's all about positive. I can't work with spirit if I can drink it. I can't work with spirit if I'm sad, down, angry, upset, or anything other than normal. When do you guys meditate? I'm not, I'm not against it, guys. I'm just asking. My personal opinion, I cannot sit and listen to whale music for two hours <laughs> without falling asleep within 12 minutes. <laughs> That's, that's my personal opinion. Just being a right frame of mind. When I'm going to an investigation, this is straight up truth. Every time I'm going there, I will have headphones on. Do you think I'm listening to whale music? Sky Sports or five. Or Singer with Five Sports. Partner? Sports Five Live. Cool. Metallica. What? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. If it gets you guys in the right frame of mind and makes you guys happy. That's all it should be. Just be yourself. Many people, guys, over the years will teach you different things, different approaches. Don't conform. Don't just follow one path and stick with it. Just be open-minded. Does that make sense to you? Yeah? Try different ways, different methods. 